Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be making nitric acid uh, using the distillation method. This requires that you get any nitrate salt and concentrated sulfuric acid. When you combine these two, you make nitric acid and the corresponding sulfate salt. Um, what I've got is ammonium nitrate here. There's 80 grams of it in uh, prill form. And the stoichiometric amount of 98% sulfuric acid. It's about 30 milliliters. Doesn't look like a lot, so it's not going to cover the prills completely, uh, but we'll see how this works out. So all I'm going to do is, is pour the one into the other, um, and it'll make the nitric acid in situ, and to, to separate it, we have to uh, heat this thing up to the boiling point of nitric acid, which happens to be uh, 83 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now that those are reacting, I'm going to assemble my distillation setup, and we'll get back to you when that's done. Okay, I've got everything set up now, and it turns out the amount of sulfuric that I used actually was enough to cover all of the prills of ammonium nitrate, so that kind of works out. It makes me happy. Um, so before I start, we'll just go over the uh, setup. It's just a standard, uh, simple distillation. You've got your heat source, your reaction flask, which you can see there's the sulfuric acid has you know settled to the bottom, or the ammonium nitrate has, has floated to the top, however you want to look at it. Uh, this goes up into the still head which is connected to a thermometer adapter, so I can monitor the temperature of the vapors. Um, that's where some of the vapors will condense, and then they'll go into the condenser here, which is where the rest of them will condense, and that's water cooled by a bucket back there. Um, then that goes into an adapter to the collection flask, where I'll collect my nitric acid. So I need to heat this up to 83 degrees Celsius for the nitric acid to start coming over. All right, so let's get the condenser going. And this distillation, uh, like I said before, needs to be carried out at about 82 or 83 degrees Celsius um, for the nitric to boil over. Um, and my hot plate is not that great of a hot plate. It doesn't get, uh, it gets high enough to boil water. But um, in this configuration, what I'm going to use to help it along is a air bath. So all an air bath is, is you uh, wrap this area with um, something to contain the heat, basically, and the, the, flasks, the flask gets heated by hot air. So I'm just going to use a piece of thin aluminum foil. And wrap that around. So that's going to serve to um, keep the heat in a little better. And even though it is aluminum, you know, that's conductive, obviously, so you're going to lose some heat from that. Uh, but this seems to work pretty well, despite that. So it's been about 10 or 15 minutes into the distillation, and you can already see why I did this outside. When you distill nitric acid like this, it um, easily, very easily decomposes into nitrogen oxides, which, when combined with atmospheric oxygen, almost always form uh, nitrogen dioxide, which is... Um, this brown gas you see. So you can see um, inside the still head here, we get a nice brown coloration. And um, you can see some of the acid condensing and dripping back down. So it looks like we're about to get our first couple of drops of product. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but right inside the distillation head there, there's a little bit of uh, fog floating around. And I imagine that's from uh, the decomposing nitric acid or perhaps other nitrogen oxides, I'm not really sure. Still kind of interesting. Um, you can see the uh, condensation front has now made its way into the condenser. So we should be receiving our first couple of drops of nitric acid pretty soon. You can see especially down here the color of the nitrogen dioxide. I'm really filling the flask. So that probably means I'm heating it up a little too much, more than I should. So maybe I'll turn the heat down a bit. So I just noticed that I way overshot the temperature for this. This should be at about 83 to be distilling nitric acid, and it's much higher than that. So that's just the temperature of the vapor up here. So that means I definitely should have approached the uh, boiling point of this much slower than I did, rather than just cranking it up to maximum like I did. So that's almost certainly going to lead to some loss uh, in my yield. You can see there's a little bit of nitric um, trapped right here, and it's a 
yellow color, yellow brown. That's going to be from dissolved nitrogen dioxide. So we'll see how this all affects my yields in the end. So I let the distillation run for about two hours, and here's my final product of nitric acid. You can see it's a yellow-orange color because of the dissolved nitrogen dioxide, uh, and there's still some fumes in the uh, flask above it. Um, so while it may look dirty, it's really not. All it is is just the dissolved gases. Uh, and so this is uh, red fuming nitric acid, is what this is classified as. Uh, interestingly, the reaction flask here has all solidified after it cooled down uh, into this white mass of crystals and that's going to be the um, ammonium sulfate that was formed so that's the other product and what video on nitric acid production would be complete without a shot of it reacting with copper so a piece of copper wire in there we'll add some acid to it And immediately, you can see it starts dissolving and producing nitrogen dioxide gas. It's a good proof that this actually is nitric acid because that acid is the only acid that will actually dissolve copper. No other acid will do that. Now, the acid I made is classified as red fuming nitric acid. That means that it's concentrated enough where if you blow air at it, it fumes because it reacts with the moisture uh, in the air. And it's red because it's got these dissolved nitrogen dioxide gases in it. Thanks a lot for watching.